Let's take a look at GDP figures for South Africa. Barely treading water, 0.1% in the fourth quarter of 2023. Barely escaping a recession, it contracted in the third quarter of uh, 2023. As far as growth for full year 2023, South Africa, 0.6%. What does this mean? Let's talk to Yvonne Mango, who, of course, senior economist at uh, Bloomberg, joining us uh, from Johannesburg. Yvonne, good mm, afternoon to you in uh, Johannesburg. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So, I mean, what do you make of these numbers from South Africa? 0.1%, full year growth 0.6%. Is South Africa just treading water, as I said earlier? Yes, so I guess the good news was that it did escape in a recession, but uh, growth was very weak at 0.1%. Um, and that put four year growth number at uh, 0.7%. Um, that's significantly uh, below the growth number for 2022, which is 1.9%, and lower than the um, long term average of 2%. So, yes, um, South Africa is underperforming on the growth front. Uh, you know, uh, we've been talking about this all day. In Nigeria, we had our National Assembly suffering. A an embarrassing blackout that uh, shut down legislative activity for an, a, a bit of time yesterday. ESCOM, uh, the blackouts uh, in South Africa, is that still the biggest uh, load shedding? Is that still the biggest drag on growth? Um, yes, um, yes, it is. So we've stopped being embarrassed by our power outages, but yes, it is a significant drag. You can imagine the energy intensive sectors such as uh, man mining and manufacturing are the worst affected. Um, by the power outages. But in addition to that, we've started experiencing um, logistics challenges, uh, bottlenecks at uh, Transit, which is a state-owned um, enterprise that um, uh, manages uh, logistics in the country. And those uh, bottlenecks are also um, undermining growth. Okay, so since you mentioned logistics, I guess what's, if you look at some of the sectors that did okay, transport storage mm -hmm. up by almost 3% in Q4, it, what's mm -hmm. the takeaway from there? So yes, it was a pickup from the uh, previous quarter's uh, growth number, which was lower. But if you look, if you compare it to previous years, it is significantly lower than the high single-digit growth would get for the sector, and that's reflecting the uh, challenges that. Um, um, uh, business are having getting their goods through the ports. So for instance, we had um, a PMI number for January come out, uh, which dropped significantly uh, from 50 to 43. And part of the reason for that was that manufacturers were finding it difficult to get their inputs through from the port. So that is having uh, significant implications uh, for the sector, but also um, it has linkages, those sectors have linkages into other parts of the economy. Um, and as we saw, manufacturers um, also took a hit. And uh, mining, quarrying up 2.4%, but I guess mining production for full year 2023, a contraction of you know 0.4. What's, yes. your, what's your assessment of that sector? Yes, so as I mentioned earlier, it is an energy intensive sector. So that's part of the reason we are seeing it underperform. Um, in addition, as you can imagine, uh, given that uh, underperformance, it is impacting our export sector. South Africa uh, is biggest, uh, it's, a, it's a big exporter of minerals. So that has implications um, on the external uh, position of the country. Um, it also has implications for employment. We have seen a few mining companies shed jobs um, in recent quarters, and that's a reflection of the, um, the downturn that you're seeing in the sector. Awesome. Um, manufacturing, I imagine that's also pretty important to South Africa's uh, economy. But, you know, again, just 0.2% in the fourth quarter, 0.4% for the full year. Um, yes. does, that need to be, does that need to be improved? Well, what do you make about manufacturing? Oh, absolutely. So part of the reason for that is an avian flu that we ex experienced in the third quarter of the year um, that had significant implications for the sector in terms of production of eggs and um, as well as uh, poultry. And then, of course, we also had floods and, um, in, in the second half of the year, particularly the third quarter. So that had implications for the agriculture and the sector did contract for those uh, two final quarters of the year. It ha does have significant impl implications, not just on the production front, which impacts GDP, but also on inflation. If you look at our inflation number, uh, probably the most stickiest item in terms of inflation is food. Um, and that's having significant implications um, in terms of the um, the trajectory. So while we are expecting an overall slowdown in inflation um, for uh, South Africa this year, that's largely to be driven by uh, non-food items, including transport price inflation. Now, retail uh, trade, I, I guess sales down about 0.1% or so for the, I think the full year. Is the average South African shopper squeezed? 
Yes. So um, the I think the figure you're referring to is the trade uh, number in terms of production. That's also in retail trade. Um, yes, that has been weaker than we've seen previously. What was interesting, though, for the fourth quarter number, which uh, is what uh, was published yesterday, we did see a pickup in retail sales compared, of course, to a very poor third quarter. And I guess that was a seasonal effect, uh, reflecting some festive season related demand. We saw a pickup, particularly in durable goods demand for that. So that did help lift uh, household consumption uh, from negative territory, um, which helped, but it's still uh, pretty weak. All right. Well, we're just talking about the need to boost Nigeria's uh, domestic tourism in our last segment with the CEO of, of Transcorp, which is a m big conglomerate here. They've, they're big in hospitalities. Uh, and I want to ask you about, I guess, income from tourist accommodation for full year 2023 in South Africa up about, I get 28.4 percent or so. Does that suggest tourism is still strong? Yes, tourism has been relatively resilient. I guess the reason for that is because the demand for it, or a big share of the demand for it, comes from the external environment. It's uh, international tourists who are not as impacted by the downturn that we're seeing uh, domestically. So tourism has um, continued to chug along, uh, despite some of the constraints uh, we have seen in other sectors of the economy. All right. Now, there's, of course, a big election uh, later this year. I mean, the US, the UK, mm -hmm. South Africa. How do you think the election could impact your economic, your outlook for the economy for South Africa? So unlike the rest of Africa, economic activity continues to carry on um, during elections in South Africa. So we don't expect the elections per se to um, slow economic activity. Um, in terms of growth, our projection for this year is around uh, is one percent from 0.7 percent previously. Um, but um, the elections themselves taking place not to have a material impact on that. What I think uh, where the concern is is the outcome of the election. You're probably aware that um, the governing party is at risk of not getting a majority vote this particular year, which means they may be compelled to form a coalition. Um, and um, if that's the case, um, that has implications going forward. Um, the likelihood at that stage is that if indeed they form, they do form a coalition, it's likely to be of smaller parties, and that suggests that policy should uh, remain the same. So we're expecting policy continuity and not much change in terms of the growth trajectory going forward. Ivan Mango, uh, Africa economist at Bloomberg. It's always a pleasure having you to talk about the Afri number of nations on the African uh, con continent. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.